Hi everyone, it's Garaban here again. It's the 23rd of June 2010. Uh, I know I did a video yesterday, um, but something turned up in the post today that's prompted me to do this video, which is one I've wanted to be do for a while. Um, as you can see, that's the uh, the Game Boy, so I guess you'll realise that that's what we'll be talking about is Nintendo handheld consoles. Um, right here is my original 1989 Game Boy, which is what I got from brand new. Uh, very used, bit of yellowing around the edges couple of marks things like that but you can see on the front you've got the LCD screen which your dot matrix screen um, which is the four ranges of green in various and dark of darkenings um, as the original Game Boy was well known for you've got the battery indicator directional pad select start BA buttons speaker there on the bottom you have the headphone jack on this side you have the charging point for or the PowerPoint for connecting to a mains adapter or if you had the Nintendo rechargeable battery pack or things like that they would fit in there you have the contrast dial on the other side you have the expansion port here which is for plugging up to multiple for two player connection or, or, or other things like that and it had a nice little dust cover to keep it clean most people end up losing that when they got their original Game Boys and then you've also got the, the volume control on the back you've got the battery compartment the game, original Game Boy ran on four AA batteries for about eight hours worth of play and the game cartridge slot and also on the top you have the power switch which when slid across would uh, have this little plastic lip to stop you from uh, pulling the game out while it was in use. Now the original Game Boy games that came out were all um, this sort of this grey case and there's the little lip take cut out for the piece of plastic that comes over to stop you from removing it and they all had little logos on there to say what what sort of um, player numbers and things like that you could use it for you'd have like one player would be that they can just see there a little man with a, uh, a Game Boy with headphones on two player would be two people with a with headphones on um, obviously that was the standard uh, cartridge style and colour for, for, for a while um, obviously Nintendo introduced new features as time went by and other units and that then moved on. Um, for example, when they released this, which is the Super Game Boy, which was an add-on that allowed you to plug your Game Boy games into the unit and play them on your Super Nintendo. Um, they also introduced new cartridges, same colour, same shape, but they had a little Super Game Boy um, game pack mark on there, which meant that they, if you put them into a Super Game Boy, you had additional features that weren't available to the when it was being played on a Game Boy. Uh, for example, like with um, Castlevania Legends here, you would have uh, improved sound, improved, you know, slightly different colour palettes and fixed colour palettes, rather than being stuck to the specific colour palettes that they made up for the standard games. Um, it also meant you had access to like games like on Space Invader, is if you put it into the Super Game Boy and plugged it into your SNES, you had an option to play a version of the game that was two player and have different game features than you did um, you know, additional games that weren't available to the original Game Boy version um, so that was quite good um, now obviously with the original Game Boy you had the uh, the games came out and what I'll just do is uh, just show you uh, just some jumped forward slightly um, they Nintendo released these black cartridges which were when they released the Nintendo Color uh, Nintendo Game Boy Color um, that meant that the games were playable on original Game Boy and they are also playable on the Game Boy Color uh, but had new features built into the game for the Game Boy Color that you would have like color graphics things like that or, or in the case of the Zelda you actually had an additional dungeon based on um, the color of uh, a color dungeon and you also had um, things like you could use the Game Boy printer uh, as well as um, colored uh, Link had different color costumes that you could collect um, obviously, same cartridge size, same shape. They just made them different colour plastic, so you knew which one was which quite very easily, and where where the game was. They also removed the uh, number of player logo that was considered not required anymore. Now, obviously, if you put Super Game Boy game, sorry, a colour Game Boy game into your normal uh, with Game Boy features, it'll just power on as normal. I'll show you there. This Game Boy is old. The screen is starting to go. Um, so the sides are have lost lines, so we can jump through there. And there's the uh, Legends of Zelda title screen. You can see that there. Um, now, obviously, 
with the Game Boy being out for, for a short period, for a while, Nintendo technology moved on and Nintendo decided to bring out a, small, a more pocketable unit. Uh, that is when they introduced this, which was the Game Boy Pocket. The unit is about an inch shorter, uh, half an inch wide, uh, uh, narrower and also a bit shorter in other dimensions. Um, other changes they made is the select start buttons were flattened out. The screen is slightly bigger. You've still got the battery indicator. You've still got the uh, D-pad and BA buttons and the speaker there. They moved and changed the um, mains adapter connection. And they've moved up to the bottom alongside the, the headphone jack. They also removed the um, slide at the uh, cover to stop you from removing games while they were in while you were playing and the unit was on. Um, you still got the power switch on the top. They also swapped the contrast around to the other side, so the contrast is actually on the right now rather than on the left. And they resized the expansion port, the two-player port, so you had to have a new two-player cable if you wanted to use this. Um, the other difference is the screen is bigger and has a, it's actually grey and black rather than green and black. And the unit runs on two AAA batteries rather than the standard uh, four AA's. And it gave you just as good a battery life as the other as the original. I'll uh, just throw there. Takes the same games, exactly the same unit, just you know newer newer components, made smaller, um, and work better. Also, we turn that on. You can see the nice, biggest, clearer screen. Um, I know you can't really see that it's actually grey properly. Um, but it is, it's, you can see videos, there's other people show videos that show it is grey. We can skip there. And there's the Zelda DX um, title screen again. Now obviously, in the UK and America, that is as pretty much as, as we remember um, of the Game Boy, original Game Boy series, until they brought out this, which was the, the Game Boy Color. However, in Japan, um, Nintendo, before the release of the uh, Game Boy Color, Nintendo wanted to bring out another unit and they brought this out. And this is actually what I've got in the post today. Um, it is called the Game Boy Lite. Now, it's slightly bigger, slightly taller than the Game Boy Pocket. Slightly, ever so slightly wider. That was my Game Boy Pocket. Um, it's alright, these are robust, they last. Um, and it's also quite a bit, little bit wider, um, mainly because they introduced, they gave you the two double A's rather than two triple A's. Now there's a very good reason for them doing that, um, which we'll talk about in a moment, which is, you can tell by the name really. Still got the D-pad, still got select start in the same position, the AB button, speaker, charger unit, and headphone jack, extension volumes, they're all, all in the same places with the uh, Game Boy Pocket. Again, cartridge slot on the top as well. Now, the Game Boy Light has two features. First feature, or well, two, two main features, his main feature. Turn it on, obviously there you go. Standard um, Game Boy, no backlight. Go through there, touch screen there, it's fine. However, let me on there. What it did have is backlight. Now I'll just turn the light off for a second so we get a better view of that. We can just see there is actually uh, illumination being produced by the back of the screen. It's very similar to the uh, sort of screen you would get with um, the sort of light you would get with uh, glowing dark watches, things like that. Uh, but it did mean that you could play your Game Boy in the dark without needing the light. Uh, it's actually got a freeway switch. This one, it's a unit I picked up on eBay, very cheap. Normally these go for around about £100 at the moment, boxed or, or even unboxed in good condition. This is a little bit beaten up, a bit in marks on it, but hey, I paid a lot less than £100 for it, and it means I've now got one to my collection, um, and it works. So that's all good. Um, so that's yeah, that's the, the Game Boy Light. That's the one most people probably don't, don't know about, purely because it was only available in Japan, and it only had a very short number of units. I believe they only sold 12,000 units at the time, um, something like that is the sort of number that people are banding around, which kind of proves that the unit never actually properly sold and kind of, kind of didn't really survive.